Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here in CMC Vellore. And I would like to thank all the organizing team for allowing us to present this uh, presentation on Chavi. So Chavi is comprehensive archive of cancer imaging. And today I will be presenting mainly how we decided to go about delivering this thing. I must note at the beginning that this is a collaborative project between Tata Medical Center and Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Professor Jayanto Mukherjee from IIT Kharagpur was supposed to be here, but he could not be present here due to some personal family issues. And while they're getting the presentation issues sorted, uh, I would just like to briefly tell about the genesis of how we decided to go about Chavi. So we all know images in medical uh, images as we call them are basically more than pictures, they are data. And images have several fundamental properties that make them very valuable data. They are the key component of the management of the patients. They sample the entire volume of the disease and allow sampling of multiple volumes. These are usually non-invasive and they are eminently repeatable. Practitioners in this area would be well aware of many image banks which are available. What were the gaps that we sought to fill? First was the limited availability of data from Southeast Asian populations. The second was that imaging data sets have limited commonality between them. That is, these image sets will be acquired on different kinds of platforms, will have different kind of sequences and so on. And finally, these data sets will be restricted to specific cancer sites and research questions. So if you want to go beyond this data set, collect information or have a research question which spans across data sets, you do not have an easy way of doing it. So this was the project scope that we thought of. Uh, we wanted to, of course, have de-identified patient information and de-identified patient images. We wanted to put it in an integrated database, integrate a flexible query interface and a GUI so that you can visualize this. And we hoped to include a app library of radiomics which actually allow you to query this data. Because this was such a big project, we decided to take on something that was chewable. And we decided to focus on radiation oncology. Why? We were a department of radiation oncologists. And we decided that radiation oncology images are actually not so well represented in the imaging archives that we have currently available. Radiation oncology images are pretty rich sources of information because they not only capture the information of the image at diagnosis, they actually capture serial images as the patient is getting treated on a daily basis. So this is Chavi Aro, the portion that we thought we will deal with initially. Our overall a broad objective is to actually serve as an entire omics bank at some time in the future. We had a past history of research with IIT Kharagpur. These are just two of the publications that have come out. The first one was looking at uh, changes in the cone beam CT. And cone beam CT, for those who are not radiation oncologists, are CTs which are acquired while the patient is getting treatment. So this actually gives you a day-by-day -day snapshot of how the tumor is changing. The other thing was slightly different from radiological imaging. That was prediction of KI-67, uh, immunohistochemical marker, on, his, on stained slides. So we decided to go ahead with IIT Kharagpur and take this forward. And we got a grant from the National Digital Library of India. And we sent this proposal through the Institutional Review Board. We got our consent forms approved. And we decided to proceed with the development. The principles that we followed were that imaging data was to be stored along with clinical data. So this is something that is very important to us. We wanted to store information regarding demographics, tumor profile, patient outcomes. All the patient data that is included in Chavi is included after explicit consent. And a radiological biobanking consent was therefore developed. We already had specimen biobanking consent forms which were developed separately. All data was to be de-identified to remove protected health information. This include named identifiers, email addresses, addresses up to district level, date of birth, date of registration, 
And this included not only the identification of DICOM images, but also the clinical data. The second important thing that we wanted to have was a longitudinal integrity between the data. What does that mean? It means that when you have multiple images or multiple data points of patients' clinical data being acquired over particular periods of time, you want to make sure that the date difference between these two observations is retained. The challenge that is there is that the date itself cannot be retained, because if you retain the date, that's an identifying information. So what we did was we implemented a system which changed the data, the date in such a manner that the longitudinal integrity could be retained, but these dates were changed. Data storage could be only possible after de-identification, and this is something that is achieved in the software stage that unless and until the images and the clinical data pass through our de-identification system, they cannot be uploaded into the data bank. Of course, we wanted to go with a relational database for data storage. It allowed for expansion of the database in the future, and most importantly, it allowed for flexible querying. So this was the de-identification system that we developed. Now, DICOM de-identification on the surface is a very easy problem to solve. DICOM image are pretty well standardized images. They have metadata that is associated with them, and we know that these metadata have to be removed from the images. Now, one of the important key characteristics of the images that we deal with in radiation oncology is the fact that these images sometimes can have burnt pixels, burnt in pixel data, which means you burn in patient information at the pixel level. We have currently not decided to include those kind of images, and this would be classical examples would be mammographic images for now. Now, uh, the second challenge in radiation oncology de-identification is the fact radiation oncology images have additional pieces of information, like the structures that we draw on these images, the plans that we do on these images, the dose that is accumulated because of the plan, and all of these are actually linked through specific SOP UIDs. So whenever you are de-identifying this kind of data, you have to de-identify preserving this linkage such that this data can be brought back into a treatment planning system for later on use. The next challenge that we solved was clinical data de-identification. Now, clinical data de-identification is a pretty difficult challenge to solve because clinical data is acquired in multiple ways, and just storing free text data makes no sense. It is simply a way of burdening your database with database which you would need separate layer of analytics, and it can also code in information which may be identifiers. So at the start, we decided that we will be storing only structured data. Now, whenever you're storing structured data, one of the problem that comes is that the areas where you're storing the structured data may have different definitions. For example, age may be simply stored as a date of birth, it may be stored in number of days, it may be stored in number of months, it may be stored in number of years, and so on. Some systems may even store age more than 60, less than 60. So of course, there has to be a standardization involved whenever you're getting this data into the Chavi system. And currently, how this system works is that we have a project level mapping. So whenever there is a kind of data set that has to be contributed to Chavi, we design a separate project for it. And in that project, we ask the clinicians or the researchers what kind of data they are wanting to contribute to Chavi for that particular patient. This will be mapped to the corresponding Chavi data set using this kind of a spreadsheet currently. We are, of course, going to move forward to a more software-based model later on. But this allows us to map the data onto our Chavi data bank. And this was the data structure that we decided upon. Now, this data structure is derived from the way we actually see patients in the clinic. And this is something that we decided upon at the beginning, that the data that we capture from the patients would be something that we would be obtaining from clinical use. So for example, patients may have multiple encounters. They may have multiple records of pathology. They may have multiple records of treatment. All of these should be captured. So this kind of a relational or a hierarchy of information has to be maintained in the database. Now this also is a difficult challenge to solve because whenever you are de-identifying this data at multiple time points and putting it back into the database, 
it is possible that your data integrity gets lost. And that is where the preservation of the longitudinal time points between the data becomes so very important. So this is our current system that we follow. We have treatment planning systems, so PACs, which provide us with the DICOM data. Clinical data is currently being used or passed through a REDCap database. Now, these REDCap databases are not Chavi specific. They can be REDCap databases of other studies that you use. And as I mentioned, there will be a de-identification system, which is a standalone desktop system, which has this, uh, trans has this system of translating the clinical data into the de-identified data. And this de-identification system generates a pair of de-identified images and the corresponding clinical information. And this is then translated into Chavi, which is actually a Dockerized application. And this Chavi application is currently built by hand using a MySQL database as a backend, and we have a simple PHP encoded application. These were the projects that we initially decided to start with. Of course, whenever we are banking images, we have to have certain set of images that we wanted to. So Intel Hope was a project that we have uh, done as a randomized controlled trial where we wanted to see the benefit, the effect of PET-guided dose escalation. Hypot adjuvant is basically a randomized controlled trial we are conducting in breast cancer. Imprint is a project which is a successor of the CBCT lung cancer project that we had done. And brain tumors, we are having a rad glio project. We are, we are going to look at the uh, MRI information. So we decided to focus on this because this would actually allow us to test the system in terms of the de-identification of the image data as well as the clinical data, bring the treatment planning data back and forth from the treatment planning system. So this was the inauguration. We inaugurated this system uh, last year in September. Uh, people from large number of institutes were actually available and we are fortunate that CMC Vellore was us, with present with us during the entire development pathway. So how you can use Chavi? Chavi is currently available at https chavi.ai. You have to register as either a data provider or as a data viewer. The data provider is currently sort of, we are testing it in the sense that we are basically finding out how many people want to be data providers. Most of the people that we are registering are currently data viewers. So they want to download the data and use it. So this is a simple step-by-step -step form where we ask you to give us some basic information about yourself, how you plan to use the data, and uh, we present you with a list of simple policies, and most of the policies are pretty simple. The data sets are, most of them are currently licensed under the Creative Commons uh, Share Alike 3 license. Uh, once you get the registration, this is currently a manual process where a person gives you a registration ID after verifying your registration information. You can log into our repository, and from there, you can search by the cancer site, and currently, this search system is pretty basic. Uh, but it gives you the ability to see the data sets that are available and download them. Now you would notice that the patient date of birth have all been transformed. All of them are in January 1st. So this is something that we do to remove the identification. Current statistics, we have around 772 patients data with 1,213 images account for 159 gigabytes of data across five projects. We have around 1,233 patients who have provided consent prospectively. As you can understand, that this is a manual process of de-identification, data curation, and data upload that goes on. And so therefore, it has a sort of a slowness to it. We currently have 72 registered data viewer users from nine countries and 50 institutions, most of them, of course, from India. What's the way forward? We are, of course, going to start with open sourcing of the de-identification system. This is work in progress. There are some documentation that has to be completed. Once this is done, we will be releasing it to the world. We wish to integrate this data bank and the website into a single system to streamline the registration and the download process. We want to integrate better search, better faceted search, present API endpoints to access the data, and integrate other forms of medical data like non-DICOM images, electrophysiological data, and digital pathology. One of the things that we also want to do is to use this Chavi system in different research projects. And one of the research projects that we are targeting is Suraksha, that is standardized, unified radiotherapy quality assurance. What we are trying to do is to integrate Chavi 
as one of the enablers to en give us the uh, process for uh, peer review and quality assurance of radiotherapy plans. And we have some buy-in from the majority uh, large institutes across the country for this. How is Chavi going to participate in this, or how is it going to be? So it is, of course, going to be a data archive for this. We plan to integrate systems like contour peer review and auto plan review systems using the Chavi data bank, uh, which will be uh, allowing us to quality assure the plans and the contours. How can you participate in Chavi? We invite all institutions to use Chavi, provide the identified image, and of course, use the data. Uh, access to the researchers that you would find and work with your clinical problem. We have a researcher page which not only gives information about the data set but also the researchers who are working on that problem. We would love to have Chavi be used as, uh, to develop models on multi-institutional Indian data and validate models which are developed outside India on our patient population. With that, I would like to thank you on behalf of the team from Chavi. Chavi is accessible at this website. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful talk. I think we have time for some two questions. One, uh, only one question, I think. We are running out of time. Then. I am Sandeep. Um, I just wanted to ask about, um, uh, so you mentioned that in the diagram there is red cap and you take the data and de-identify uh, de it and, and, and put it in a Docker container. So what exactly goes into the Docker container? So the, in the Docker container, there's a JSON file that goes in, which gets then mapped into the relevant for fields in the database, into the MySQL database. Uh, I mean, because I'm, uh, I thought like the application is exposed, it's a web service. So if someone wants to use that, they can just go into that. So, so currently yeah. what is happening is when you download the DICOM data, we give you a download of the clinical data that is associated with the clinical data. This is, of course, not something that we desire to keep on doing. And at one point of time, we would probably have a system which allows you to get the data and the associated DICOM data set as queries. So you would have the DICOM data set coming in and the data of all the, say, 15, 20 patients whose DICOM data sets you are able to download come in as maybe a text format or a CSV file of some sort. Uh, Dr. Balu to comment something on it. Yeah, Shantam, thanks for accepting our invitation and presenting the Chavi model. Uh, you know that we are building a prognostic model in head and neck cancer. So if we were to use Chavi, uh, how far down the line do we get outcome data? And if you say you are de-identifying data, how are you going to add on the follow-ups? Okay, so the de-identification system that we have developed is actually a standalone system which actually retains the identifiers, but this is not connected to the Chavi system. This will be a separate piece of software which will be isolated from the Chavi network. Uh, it, of course, has access controls built into it. Uh, so whenever you are having a second set of images or clinical data that you want to integrate, you would run it through the same de-identification system, which will retain the longitudinal integrity of the data from the dates as well as the integrity of the identification. And that can then be uploaded into Chavi system, which will organize the data along with the patient. Thank you. Okay, thank you once again.